Hello and good evening. My name is Dan. Uh, welcome to another episode of Inside the Borough, the FAU podcast for and by fans. Uh, I go by FAU for show on the FAUallisonest.com. I'm here with Jack and Aaron. Say hello, guys. Hello. Hey, guys. I'm Jack. How y'all doing? Uh, so tonight, uh, we've got uh, a couple things to go over here. We're going to start off going over uh, the uh, Tulsa loss and kind of kind of recap what we felt, some of the positive negatives that happened out of that, um, sum that up, and then kind of move on to what FAU and athletics is billing as the biggest game in FAU history. Uh, so to get started, uh, we know FAU lost another uh, thrilling game. Uh, could be thrilling. A lot of people called it thrilling, but I, for me it was disappointing. Nerve wracking and stupid the way we lost, um, lost in overtime on a touchdown. There's a couple things that, that kind of stuck out. Uh, one of the biggest things that sticks out right away is the penalties. Uh, 13 penalties for 130 yards. Uh, I was trying to think back, you know, where most of those were. It was just disappointing, and I think pretty much all of them were. There's probably going to be three or four that were committed on the defensive end, but most of them were on offense. Um, that was pretty disappointing. Yeah, uh, the biggest ones were the holding calls on key drives. They probably could have put the game away for us. Uh, definitely uh, a couple on the defensive side of the ball, but that late hit, questionable out of bounds, I think that kind of swung the momentum late for midway through the first period, uh, first quarter towards the second quarter, gave Tulsa the momentum before we took it back. So. Well, they scored, only, what, they scored like two or three plays later. After yeah. and that was a, I think that was a third down. So they it, would was, have, it was a third down. Yeah, it would have been a fourth down after that. So, I mean, you got to tighten those up. You guys had – they had four weeks of camp, you know, to prepare for games. So, prepare for the game. I mean, you can't have that many penalties first game out and scores. But I was still surprised that we put up the amount of points we did and came close to winning. Well, I mean, quick disclosure, I'm not the kind of guy that blames refs for losses. Um, but, I mean, you know, going back to those penalties, you know, all those holding calls, uh, it was just really unbelievable that there were that many. Um, you know, the old saying is that there's a holding on just about every play. It's whether or not the ref sees it or wants to call it. Um, yeah. I, I, thought it was, I thought it was strange that, uh, you know, we could not get after Evans, the Tulsa quarterback, uh, for the fourth quarter while, you know, we were dominating the line of scrimmage on the defensive side of the ball going after Evans uh, throughout the first three. And then Tulsa's in trouble, the American Conference team, the American Conference refs, as if they just kind of put the flag in our pocket, um, allow the offensive line to hold on to the uh, FAU defensive line a little bit longer. I mean, Evans had three, four seconds – uh, the majority of the game, and by the fourth quarter, I mean, you guys saw it. He had seven, eight seconds in the pocket. You know, yeah. I don't think all of a sudden the offensive line, Tulsa's offensive line, suddenly just knew how to block. And, you know, vice versa with FAU. Uh, the refs really started to throw the flag, so the FAU offensive line knew that if, you know, their hand goes uh, outside the uh, defensive lineman's jersey, they're going to call it. They know if they see a little tug, they're going to call it. So they're going to be even more conservative. And then all of a sudden – Quez and running backs have two seconds, three seconds to operate. Yeah. I, I, I mean, the, the amount of penalties was, was quite – it was to me a little surprising. Like, I know we, we weren't the best, um, the best team with penalties last year, but I think if there was any, any bright side last year, I felt that we were a pretty disciplined team. And to see just in the consistency of penalties, you know um, – yeah, 130, uh, 130 penalty yards, and what did Tulsa have? Four for 26. Like, I don't know. That, that just seems that just seems a little bit rough. To, and yeah, actually, the, I think there were two times. There was the the bogus late hit out of bounds, where the quarterback was completely 100% inbounds and heading, you know, towards the the first down marker. Uh, and then I think there was another, maybe like an illegal hands to the face or something, and that extended a drive. And that turned into um, that turned into points. So I think there were two penalties that eventually turned into points. Um, so that was kind of a bummer. I think. In, 
Go ahead, Jack. Ken, Ken Levick did a good job of uh, trying to find this photo of the penalty in overtime. I think it was oh, yeah. uh, was it third or second and goal uh, for our, our offense um, in which the refs called a legal procedure, legal formation. There weren't enough men on the line, and you could count all the guys in a line, and there were seven. There was seven guys in a line, which is – where they're yeah. supposed to be. Um, yeah, I asked. Um, I, I clearly, I clearly, FA didn't didn't agree with the call. Um, so, and that 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 brings me to kind of the next thing. So, one of the parts, I guess, talking about the the good things still. We'll get we'll get to the negatives in a little bit. One of the things that was was very encouraging was how unbelievably efficient the off the offense was at times. I mean, there were times where we just flat out dominated them where we were unstoppable um we had a total of what was it we had over 500 yards 563 total yards um 200 yards rushing uh so i'm sorry 300 yards rushing uh between quez uh buddy howell who had over 100 which is just beastly and jay warren i mean like our running game is with those three runners is is pretty darn good it, i mean we should be able to compete we should be able to be we're above average in that area um, so the, the offense at times was just flat out amazing. And this, that's, goes back to the same thing of, of, or being inconsistent. Sometimes Brian Wright calls a heck of a game where he's creative. Things are happening. He, he he's keeping the defense off guard. Um, and then other times it's just Quez is, is, uh, forcing his way through the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and Dan, you brought up a good point. Our running backs, I mean, when they were actually getting the holes to run through, they were powering their way through people. Uh, Warren, who had a touch of fumbleitis last year, if anyone's ever seen the movie, uh, Necessary Roughness, uh, <laughs> actually held on to the ball for a chance, ran through people. Greg Buddy Hall is showing that he can be that power running back that we want. But, I mean, there are at times when – I don't want our starting quarterback being running like he was in that toss game. I'd rather have him back there picking apart defenses, but Quez is a beast. He can power over people. He proved that. How many times did they show it during the game yesterday? Him literally knocking Tulsa defenders back. Yeah. That. Oh, that was beautiful. Just hearing that sound, that crack was great. Loved it. And that's, I think, go ahead, Aaron. I mean, I mean, I understand he's a big boy and he's a, he's a great big guy. Sorry, he's, my, he's our starting quarterback. I don't want him trying to do it that too much during the course of the game, too. I, I mean, I think Quez is at his best when he, when he does scramble like that. I always – because he had that, those shoulder problems last year, every time he would go to hit somebody, I'd be like, ah. Um, you know, hopefully he's a, he's a bowling ball, you know, so he can, he can barrel through people. But uh, – I th he's at his best when when he's when he's in the pocket and he's trying to find a pass, nothing's open, and he takes off. I think he's at his best then. Um, the uh, another positive we'll, we'll talk about really quickly was I mean even defense. There were there were times when the defense seemed was pretty solid, but our our you know our calling card really is that we could not be consistent uh, to cause four turnovers. That's pretty pretty good you know um so we played well at times i i was surprised on how well our uh, young freshmen actually stepped up to the plate and actually played throughout the course of the game they actually showed me that they're there they can play the game i mean yes they made mistakes it's they're still in a college game at the level as very much very much true freshmen but they showed flashes that interception Third, what was it, late third, early fourth quarter, the freshman that went cut in front of the receiver caught the ball on the dive. Mm -hmm. That was beautiful. When I yeah. want to see from our backs. Yeah. I mean, but they're like uh, Jensen Stoshek's brother. He got beat how many times during that course of that game? And it, it especially when he was filling in for uh, one of our injured guys. Uh, Great Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sherrod well, Neesman, right? Sure. I think it was your Sherrod, yeah. And yeah. He got for a touchdown on that one play. I think it was a touchdown. Yeah, yeah. Jake got beat a few times. Um, you know, he, he's still young himself, so that comes with learning curves. And it was really hard when he's covering one of the best quarterback-to-receiver duos in all of G5 yeah. uh, conferences. 
So, you know, that's, that's just one of those things you're going to learn. I'd rather him learn that those lessons uh, against Tulsa than against Miami or Western Kentucky or Marshall. Um, going back, Aaron, as you said, going back to the freshman, uh, I mean, Jalen Young from uh, Palm Beach Central, uh, Nickelback was like second or third in the team in tackles, which really goes how good this past recruiting class was when it comes to athletes in the defensive side of the ball, how they swarm to the ball, how they're sure tacklers. It's really good to see players that young uh, really be able to have a full range of skills on the defensive side of the ball. Mm-hmm. Yeah, again, I mean, they, they mentioned a couple times on, uh, on the broadcast, they mentioned the Fab 15, but they played well. And, and again, this is something that uh, I, I mentioned on the board. Like, this season, there's no excuse. Like, these, these are the type of games that we should be winning. Um, and that's what makes it so, so very frustrating. Uh, a couple of things that, that were um, really bothersome. At t- so, uh, going back to the inconsistencies of, of Brian Wright, sometimes he, sometimes he calls a great game, and then sometimes Quez is just taking the ball and running, and I think we're trying to go, go too quickly. For instance, the, uh, there was a couple times where like, they couldn't stop Quez, and, and so like, we'd get a first down, Quez would, Quez would hike it and just take off running and pick up three to four yards. Um, and I felt when, when it was second and goal from the one, um, and Quez tried to, tried to hurry up, and, and they, they lined him up under center. Like, Tulsa had like nine guys in the box. Like, they were, everybody was right in front of the line of scrimmage. And they tried, they tried to do a quarterback sneak there. Like, slow down a second, you know. Like, um, let's, let's just take a second. Let's, you know, take a, uh, maybe not even take a timeout, but we've got the, we've got the quickness sideline to sideline. And even, even we were so unbelievably effective out of the, out of the shotgun, either with uh, the QB read, Quez did that well, um, or handing the ball to, to – uh, I was called him Buddy Holly. Uh, Buddy Howell, you know, like – that was to me. That was very disappointing to see that play call. That's what makes me bang my head against against my desk. Is like the sh- under center. Look at the look at the amount of guys in the box. I just I don't know. I would have loved to see Quez pull up there to jump ball to Kaleeb Woods. Yeah, and I'm part of the end zone. I really like Kaleeb. Uh, he's tall. He's athletic. He can jump. I would have loved to uh, see him. You know, win a jump ball scenario. I was like, you know. Two minutes left. I, what I liked during the course of the game, Taylor Cameron, uh, the former QB out of uh, Lake oh, yeah. Forest, uh, he played pretty well at the tight end spot. Definitely he was our best bad. tight end. The tight ends we have on the team were nowhere to be seen. Uh, especially in overtime. What happened to him? What happened in the fourth quarter? Yeah. I was like, did they get off the field? Uh, late in the fourth quarter, I think there was three minutes left, we were driving. I mean, you got 40 seconds on the clock. There, even coaches in Power Five and less in Power Five conferences, even in the NFL, what do they do in that situation? They milk the clock for all it's worth. Milk the clock, Brian Wright. I mean, come on. Use up that entire play clock before having them snap. Because we, I think we gave the ball back to them with like two minutes left in the fourth quarter, and they, they used all that clock to drive downfield and tie up the game. Yeah. Um, and then probably the the kind of close adding it adding. Uh, this is adding injury to insult, uh, but it looks as if Robert Ralph, where we're already super thin at linebacker, and Robert Ralph was playing pretty pretty strong, um, and and pretty dependable. Uh, I think it was a shoulder injury, and he uh, he appears it's a good chance he's going to be out the rest of the year. So. Um, that's, that kind of sucks. So, yeah. So I, I think for, for me, the Tulsa game, unfortunately it was, it was deja vu. I mean, how many, how many times last year did we play well enough to win for three and a half, three and three quarters quarters, um, only to, to have the game slip, slip out of reach. And it's just like, we can't, and this was something that I, because we had so many guys returning, that we would learn how to win, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, we just we, – we couldn't – when we had the opportunity to go up by 13 or go up by 17, 
we didn't do that. We didn't put the foot, our foot on their throat and, and close the game out. Yep, definitely. Uh, this is, I mean, Quez is a senior. Uh, Trayvon LeBlanc's a senior. This is their last chance to get to the bowl game since they come to FAU. I mean, I want to see them get to at least six wins and eligible for a bowl game and hopefully go to a bowl game. But they don't tighten up and learn to close out games. Uh, as great as Quez has been for FAU, he ain't going bowling. Yeah. So uh, let's, uh, let's try to forget Tulsa. Uh, and uh, let's learn from our mistakes. Hopefully, Charlie Partridge is doing that. But uh, we'll move on to Miami. So this this is a game I've been pretty excited for um, for a long time. As uh, some of you may may have known, I grew up both a Canes. I grew up a Canes fan, but I I am an Owl. Um, Jack shaking his head at me. <laughs> um, so I full wholeheartedly rooting for rooting for the Owls here. But um, it's it's an exciting game. Uh, this is uh, we were talking uh, talking before this is this is more than just what's going on on the field uh, or what will go on on the field. This is having a major impact in the community and on campus. Yeah, I mean, at my job at, uh, where I work right now, Toonies, uh, which is the health food store, they're having a bowling night down at Boca Raton at uh, Boomers, and they're going at nine o'clock. I said. You might want to get out of there by 11 because if you guys are there past 11, you're going to run into uh, traffic leaving the stadium. <laughs> so, I mean, it's big. Uh, I'm warning people that are going to be going down there. Uh, I'm married into a mixed family. The wife is a Kane fan. Uh, I'm the Owl fan because I went to school there. But she also roots for the Owl. So she says to me, I'm torn. I'm at the roots. Both teams split it up. One half the Owls, the other half the king. So, yeah. going to be a little bit interesting in the seats Friday night. Well, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, um, you know, comes UM game, you know, keep my emotions in check being a student. Um, you know, I'm really excited to go to the rat's mouth. I'm really excited to tailgate all day. I'm really excited to see, you know, the full student section, the full stadium, the team come out, uh, and, you know, these mm. new uniforms that they're hyping up. Um but it's so hard to keep my emotions in check while I'm going, you know, from the library to the Breezeway food court, you know, to class. And all you see is FAU shirts. All you see is talk about this Friday's game. All, or all you hear is talk about this, uh, the game on Friday and preparations for the tailgate and all. Um, I, I, am, I am giddy with excitement. I'm, I'm mm. itching at this game. I don't know how I'm going to be able to sleep Thursday night into Friday and I can't even imagine yeah. how the players feel. Um, you know, the campus is electric. If you guys at home watching us have any chance to go on campus Thursday or, you know, Friday, you know, many hours before the tailgate starts, just walk around campus and feel the electricity yourself. I recommend doing it because this is camp. This is the campus that we've all imagined FAU being in the future. Yeah. Uh, potential evolve known FAU has and it's finally here it might just be here for a week but it's here and I implore all of you to check it out before the game yeah the, the there's a bonfire what time the bonfire probably starts maybe about 7 30 um, I but I, I drove by the uh, the pile of pallets there is a huge huge pile of pallets out there that is going to be one uh one heck of a bonfire but um again before before the game has even started, um, what what I've enjoyed hearing is like on my on my normal drives when I'm listening to uh, Paul and Young Ron in the morning or Seven Ninety the Ticket or um, Five Sixty, they they're they're talking about us and those are the stations. Five Sixty talks about us a little bit, but because um, they've had Coach Stellenberger on a couple of times, but Seven Ninety and like uh, Paul and Young Ron. They don't talk about us. They, um, they are more cane heavy media. Um, Sun Sentinel has been doing a lot of things. Um, the uh, 790 is, is very canes heavy. Uh, and they, they, they've been talking it up just like uh, athletics has that this is the most important, this is the biggest game. Um, so I think that that's kind of cool is that we're getting into, into these conversations. Now, hopefully we don't come out uh, and to say, oh, and get destroyed, and like, oh, that's just FAU, whatever. We don't have to worry about them. If we put up a good fight, they can be like, wow, that's 
FAU, they've got something there. They've got something going in Boca. Um, so, and also the impact on the community, there's going to be fa- literally <laughs> thousands of people that have never stepped foot on our campus before and never been in our stadium. And they're going to be like, this place is great. Because our, our stadium is great. I mean, it's, it's, it's a great place. Stadium and campus both are just, you know, jaw dropping. Really, we're we're blessed, and sometimes you know we we forget how lucky we are to have a beautiful campus and such a beautiful stadium right here in Boca. Yeah, I agree. I mean, that was one thing I enjoyed coming down when I was commuting to school every day was just driving by the uh, stadium every day and seeing you know what's going on around campus. Uh, but uh, especially you know, with the with the game, you know, a lot because my wife uh, is a member of some hurricane. Uh, groups on Facebook, a lot of people are, are we're saying, where do we go for food? Where do we meet up? You know, and I'm trying to be the nice guy and help them direct them. We have a couple Kane fans that were on the board asking, you know, yeah. for information for the tailgate. And I know it's going to get a little bit towards a little bit more cynical and nasty come closer to game day, but we've been very accommodating. Everybody's excited for this game, including Kane's fans. Yeah. They're come on up and see a different stadium. They've been crying for an on-campus stadium down in Coral Gables for years, and they're going to see one that they hopefully could have in the future, but more likely will not. Yeah, and again, it's I, um, I really think it'll be um, it, it'll be a good thing. No, no matter um, the results on the field, Jack, you you made a good point that this is this is like a snapshot of what. What, what every – I mean, think of everything that's happening right now. This is a snapshot of what we could potentially have for every single game, five or six weekends every single year, is we could have this type of community involvement. You know, like, it, it's going to take a couple years, but having a win here uh, would, would be uh, – I heard uh, Charlie Parsons said this today on the radio, is that this catapults you – this um, shoots you forward about three to four years as a program you know, a, a win like this. So definitely big. So to talk about how, you know, how is FAU going to pull this off? Um, Jack, you mentioned there's some big, there's some big injuries with wide receiver that would, would probably benefit, benefit us. Yeah. Benefit us big time. Um, Stacy Coley is out. I'm really high on him. I really, really like him. Uh, he had a pretty decent game against us a couple years ago. His freshman year, his very first game, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, he's now out. Uh, Braxton um, Berrios, uh, he also, yeah, he's up, Berrios, thank you. He's also out. Uh, it's basically our number one and number two receivers that are out. Uh, Herb Waters, you guys might remember him. He sort of touched on against us a couple of years ago in Sun Life. Uh, you know, he's going to be the number one uh, receiver. Rayshon Scott had 100 yards against Bethune Cookman. He's going to be a guy to watch. Uh, and then when it comes to running backs, Gus Edwards out for the season. Uh, maybe a week and a half ago, mm-hmm. uh, still Joseph Yerby, a very athletic running back. We're going to have to, you know, stack the box against him. But, you know, with, you know, the two biggest receivers out, now we can, you know, stack the box a little bit to try and contain the run. We can take a little more risks. Now they don't have to worry about Stacey Coley, you know, and like it is 4-3 speed running downfield. They're also um, – we're not going to have to worry about – I mean, well, not going to have to worry about it. It's, I mean, it's still Miami. They've got speed all over the field. They don't – maybe the offensive weapons um, at running back, I mean, they, they've got um, Yerby, but they've also got that freshman Walton, who's a beast. Um, and uh, well, so tight end, I mean, they, they don't have um, – what's his face anymore? The guy went to the Raiders. Um, Clive Walford. Uh, mm-hmm. They don't have him anymore. So they're still going to – they still have athletes all over the field. And um, we've yet to mention Brad Kaya, by the way, oh, who's right. probably one of the He's best the sophomore the quarterbacks in the entire nation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, as, as offensively, you know, I, I think, I, I my opinion in, in these type of games is for us to have any chance of winning, FAU has to play a perfect game, a near perfect game, um, and and Miami has to have a pretty bad day. And with these injuries, I think that's possible. I definitely think it's possible. Yeah. I think yeah. – go ahead, Aaron. Yeah, it's definitely possible. Uh, 
But Dan, you brought it up when we were discussing it before. If we can get into a shootout uh, with Miami, there is a chance that we may we can end up shocking the world, so to speak. A lot of people are hoping we do. The uh, um, that the shock the world the shock the world tour would begin when I, way back. I'll, I'll this is a side story, but way back in in two thousand five, uh, when we uh, I was in the marching band. For those who didn't know. And the marching band director at that time said the uh, the shock the we, he he came up with something the shock the world tour we played we played uh, Oklahoma State on uh, I think it was a Thursday night uh, on ESPN on ESPN two national televised game he, was, he always talked about shock the world tour begins this but shock the world tour begins today so hopefully ten years later eleven years later the shock the world tour will finally begin um, but uh, yeah I think it's we're gonna have to be dang near perfect. Um, and I think we're going to have to watch out for their for special teams. My the and I think kind of going back to the shootout thing before I get into that, uh, the the knock on Miami they they scored a bajillion points last year. Um, you can look that up. That's factual. Um, their their defense has been the knock. That's been the biggest complaint is Mark D'Onofrio. You know, people have wanted him fired probably more than Al Golden because the defense has just continuously been unimpressive. So if we could get into some sort of shootout, if we can put up a lot of points, um, I think that's the this that's what we're going to do. This this game isn't going to be if we're going to win, it's not going to be a blowout. It's going to be a shootout. It's going to come down to the to the final one or two plays and whose defense can can make that one stop uh, or whose offense can create that one more uh, big play to score. Yeah, their their defense line is a little bit iffy. Uh, linebacking core. I mean, they lost Denzel Perryman. I mean, yeah, I mean, he it's he's in a role all of his own. Yeah, uh, they still have Kirby at linebacker. Um, Artie Burns, cornerback. I mean, he he's probably going to go to the NFL. He's probably going to get drafted in the first few rounds. Um, he, he worries me a lot. Uh, Dion Bush, safety, worries me a lot. So the defensive backs they have athletes. University of Miami, yeah. of course, they're going to have athletes. The defensive back position. But we can attack this front seven, I think, with our style of offense, which is, yeah. I think, you know, where we can make things happen. Yeah, it's more of like a, a bruising. Uh, a, it's like a, a power spread. You know, we, we run a spread offense, but, we, um, you know, we've got the type of bruising backs in Quez and in uh, – in, in, uh, I'm just going to call him Buddy Holly because that's what I keep thinking of. Uh, Buddy Howell, so – on the flip side, can our front seven pressure Brad Kaya enough, and can they uh, limit Yearby's, you know, Walton's uh, yardage? Yeah, you know, it goes both uh, ways. If we could, if we could put enough pressure on him and perhaps force him into a bad throw, all right, we've got, we've got, um, we've athletes got athletes too, and yeah, we've got athletes on on the defensive backfield as well. Um, so you know, maybe we can get a big turnover or two, but. I was wondering who getting this game. Is it Conference USA or A- uh, ACC? The good news, guys. We are Conference USA. All right. So ho- hopefully, hopefully we can give Miami the Tulsa treatment that we got last <laughs> week. Yeah. Yeah. I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, we'll, we'll use all the help we can get. Let's be real here. We'll use, you know, a little holding call that we can get. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I think I think it'll be fun. Um. You know, if you're going to the game, make sure you get there, get there early. Also, don't go in from Glades, come in from Spanish River. <laughs> uh, Check out the Rat's Mouth in Lot 5 behind the stadium now. Check yeah. it out. It's going to be insane. It's going to be nuts. It's going to be something you've never seen before. You never think you'd see at FAU. Check it out. Yeah. I'm yeah. Definitely enjoy it. So, sure, I think that's about this for us. Um, we kind of went over our time a little bit, but this was uh, – this is the biggest game in FAU history, so uh, we can take the time for that. So, um, if you've got any questions, again, we are we're pretty active on Twitter. You can check us out at Inside the Borough. Uh, and then, if you have, if you want to email us any questions, I gave out the email address wrong last year or last time. It's uh, Inside the Borough 1961 at gmail.com. So, um, shoot us an email. Um, if you all want to get involved with the show or anything like that, also also let us know. Reach out. And then uh, make sure to check out feualbsnest.com for all of the uh, latest up to date. There's also uh, we did this last week. Uh, opened up a chat uh, on feualbsnest. If you can't get to the game, um, take a look at that chat because that, that chat was a lot of fun. Uh, 
during the Delta game. So, again, for uh, for Jack and Aaron, my name's Dan, FAU for show. Uh, hopefully, next week we'll be talking about uh, how the Shock the World Tour has begun. So, go Owls. Go Owls. Beat Miami.